Hey everybody, it is time for a new video. I have been slacking off greatly and I apologize for that. So to kind of make it up to you guys, I decided to go ahead and do a quick tutorial video instead of a coloring video or a speed paint or something like that. Just to kind of let you guys get in my head and poke around a little bit. Um, I do apologize for the audio. I don't have a mic and the mic I normally would be using, I, I just don't have enough USBs on my laptop and it's the only thing that will um, record my screen. So you will hear my laptop fan in the background. I, I apologize so much for that. Um, I'm working on getting better materials to kind of give you guys higher quality videos. But um, let's go ahead and get right into this because I have a lot to say and I, I'm hoping I can somehow teach somebody something with this. So the character that I'm using for demonstrative purposes is my character Amy. Uh, she is a good choice in my opinion because she kind of has this really crazy very full uh, aqua colored hair and I just absolutely adore her and I've got her set up in four things because the four things I want to color are her base hairstyle which is sort of her wild look I want to show you guys how I would do it with her hair kind of pulled back or pulled up in like a sloppy bun um, I want to go over blunt cut bangs because I feel like a lot of people struggle with that and a short haircut and I, you know I'm gonna try and get through all of, oops get through all of this in a relatively short amount of time so we really need to get going and I need to stop yammering but I love to yammer so as you see I've already got it set up I've got different layers I've got my character drawn out and we're ready to rock so first things first and I'm gonna go ahead and just shut all of these down so that way Come on. We have something to focus on. Um, and when I zoom out, you guys don't get too distracted by all the bald heads. Oh, look at there. The pupils are left in because <laughs> I put them all on the same layer. Okay. Ignore my blunders, you guys. This is all part of the art experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her hair on another layer because, you know, I just, it's easier that way. And I kind of like her head, so I don't want to mess it up. And I'm going to have two layers. One is going to be directional and then one is going to be the final or the colored or whatever we want to call it, call it. But okay, so for layer one, here's what we do. I already know what Amy's hair looks like. So I can basically just kind of go in and rough out where her hairline is. And that's one of the biggest things is if, when you're drawing hair is you need to know where the skull is because hair typically does not sit flat on the skull. And I realize some people will argue that, but and stylistically, people have made choices not to draw hair with volume. And I understand that. Stylistically, if that's how you want to go with it, that's how you want to go with it. But in my demonstration, she's going to have some volume because it's Amy. Now, I have her with a sort of side part right here. And it kind of lines up right with the middle of her, her um, it'd be her left eye, our, to, it'd be on the right side for us. And I did that just because it's fun to have crazy parts. So she has sort of a sweep to the side bang, but she has a, a sort of uh, jump, if you want to call it, a, a dip here. So I would come up and like this, and just in quick lines, I would add in her bangs. Because I know that this is where they're going to be. Now, because she has such full hair, and I'm just leaving the bangs like this, because it's not a big deal. This doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I'm leaving her bangs like this, but with Amy, she has very full back hair too. Now here's the trick that a lot of people, and it took me years to figure this out because I grew up watching anime. So here's what I grew up with. I grew up with a head like this, eyes, let's draw that head. And I never bothered to draw the whole head, which would have gone like back like this. So I just drew helmet hair like this for years. See what I mean is it's flat to the head where the head would be. And I never understood why. Now, this was very, uh, very much like um, uh, Akira Toriyama style because I grew up on Dragon Ball Z. Um, and things like that. Now, I'm not saying again, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it doesn't really give it any sort of volume, and that was sad to me. Like, I could never understood how, like, 
Disney characters seem to have more life to their hair, and the hair I was drawing, even though I was emulating someone else's style, was so flat and dull. So here's the trick to that, is you have your skull, and basically what you would start out doing is sort of roughing out how high you want the hair to go. It doesn't sit flat on the body. So, you know, pull it away. This is, this, this is your skull here, this is where the hair ends. And, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, well, that looks too far. Well, it doesn't, because if they have body, you can pull it out and just make it look so much better than um, just flat hair. And just pull it out. And just keep in mind, this is your part right here. Now, she has another set of small bangs right here. Sort of a layer thing here. And um, we would pull that out like so... And again, just keep going. Now, keep in mind that you have that part. Her part is not defined, as in there isn't a clear line. Now, there are some hairstyles, bangs that are, are parted three-way, definitely have a notable part, and that's something that we'll get into when we do the blunt cut. But um, in Amy's case here, she just has very, very loose, wild hair, and that's part of the reason why I adore drawing her is she... Her hair, to me, represents a type of freedom. Now, here's something else that it took me years to figure out, and almost everybody has some sort of a little sideburn thing going on here. Now, your hair does go like this. It does have directions. Um, and I always add those little details in, but they're not vitally important. But with hair, your ears, as much as we hate it, they do stick out quite a bit. Now, it's always, I think, cute to have just a little bit of the ear sticking out no matter what. So, what we're going to do is there's some tucking behind the ear here, and that's very reminiscent of Amy's hairstyle, and then some comes in front of her ear. So, if you were to color this, and we, we'll get around to it, this would be colored in. But I'm going to undo that because I don't want that to show through. Now, as you might see, is I'm drawing a lot of messy lines. And always remember that hair does what hair wants to do. And it is going to get in front of your neck. It is going to get in front of your ear. You're going to have just loose strands hanging down in front of your eyes. It is hair, guys. Give it life. Give it, give it that freedom. Let it do what it wants. Um, but as you notice, I'm doing a lot of sketchy lines. And there's a reason for that. Um, straight lines. If I were to do her hair like this, I mean, it works. You get the general idea. Oh, yeah, she's got hair. But look at that to me is so lifeless. Add in a few extra lines. Just give it just give it that little extra definition. It goes a long way. Like I realize that in animation and I realize that in especially anime where a lot of people are getting their influences from, uh, people don't want to put in those details. Because, um, you know, their justification is, well, they don't do it in the anime. You guys, if you're drawing and you're not animating, I, they do it in animation to keep things simple. Because when you're animating and you're drawing the same thing like a million times, the easier it is to draw, the easier it is for consistency, the easier it is um, to get the work done, all those things. So they have a justification for it. But if you're actually just drawing a picture like this, you know, just like a little pinup picture or whatever you want to call it, there's absolutely no reason why you can't add a little bit more detail and just kind of give it that little extra oomph. All right, so Amy's looking pretty good here with her wild hair kind of everywhere. Now, her hair goes all the way down. It's very long, um, and it's very, very kind of crazy. But uh, we're not going to get the full length of it. Now, we're pretty good here. We've got everything we need. So we're going to go ahead and toss that layer. We're going to decrease the opacity. And then we're going to get a little bit of a bigger brush. Because the way I like to work with my brushes. Come on, get bigger. Is I always have the pressure sensitivity on. So I get nice little um, tapers offs. Tapers offs. But anyway, so, you know, let's just go into adding some formal lines here. See, and the other reason I like working on different layers is if I do make a mistake, I can just easily erase it. Um, but again, here with Amy, this Amy here, 
We don't need a ton of the lines. Like, all of my sketch lines are not going to make it in. That's all there is to it. And the reason for that is, is it's just too much work. <laughs> and I will, I won't lie, I am pretty lazy. Now, when I'm doing my sketches and I'm going over it in my Copics, oh yeah, all my sketch lines stay in. And they stay in for a reason, as I feel like it gives the, the piece a, another dimension. And I like that. So, as you can see, not all the lines are making it in. Not all the little flyaways are going to make it in. But that's okay. Um, we tried to do our best to ink it right the first time. Not, not that any inking is wrong, to be honest with you, but um, I'm trying to do this really quick. And um, I know you guys are, like, judging me while I'm doing it, so. <laughs> All right, so we got Amy pretty good and on her way here. Um, let's go in here and toss this over here just really quick. And, again, her hair comes in front of here because it can. Hair tends to drape over whatever it's up against. So if you have a shoulder, say her shoulder is, like, right here, her, her clavicle is right there. If you have a shoulder, it's going to drape over the shoulder and then kind of drape behind it. So you're going to have a nice, you're going to have a nice flow to it. See, but even in this process, I'm still doing my sketching and adjusting. So you'll always be adjusting. Um, I always, some people can just hammer out hair and it's beautiful the first time. Personally, I, I, I like that, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, you don't learn a whole lot. Like, you don't get to experiment if you do it that way. Some people have to do it right the first time, and I understand that. But in the case of hair in particular, just be free with it. So that's pretty good. Um, coloring hair, I'm not really going to get into, just because I think this tutorial is is gonna it is already more focused on drawing hair and keeping in mind that um there are there are methods to making it look more alive less alive more flat whatever you want to call it see like here i'm struggling a bit even though this is a pretty pretty easy part to do and i'm struggling you're never you're not always going to get it right on the first time so what we'll do is just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like now, I always leave the eyebrows poking through the hair because eyebrows are very expressive, and I like them. But this is what it would look like without the underlying sketch showing through because it's not necessary. Is You got a pretty good amount of volume. You got a pretty good um, amount of bounce. You got a little... I don't even like that. I'm going to go ahead and cover that whole ear up right there. You've got Miss Fowler here with pretty much everything going on. Now, like I said, her hair in particular, and that's just the way that the character is designed, is very wild, very crazy, um, and it's done like that on purpose. So, always keep in mind your character. Hair tends to reflect your character. So, a nice wild hairdo kind of uh, represents a nice wild character. See, now, this isn't making sense because of the changes I've made. So again, you'll always, you'll always be going back and making just small adjustments. It's stuff you'll learn as you go along. It's not always going to come right for you the first time. But basically, that's it. Nice, wild. I realize that they're not the cleanest lines, but again, that comes with practice. And even I still struggle with it. I'm just saying, guys, the, you know, the freer you are with your hairstyles, the better. At least for my little baby like this. Alright, so there we go. There's Amy. Now let's do one of Amy with her hair up, which to me is a little bit more fun. I guess you guys are just going to have to deal with that, that being there. Now again, um, let's add another layer. And we know right about roughly where Amy's hairline is, is about midline here. So it goes around like that, and then around like that. And we've got that down. So again, she's got her side bangs, so we're just going to go ahead and toss those in nice and swoopy. I love her swoopy side bangs. They're fun to draw, they're fun to play with, and just do all sorts of things with them. And she's got another little swoop right here. 
that kind of goes back like a little, like a little cowlick, I guess is the best way to call it. Now, we're going to have her hair pulled up. I'm going to say she's going to have it pulled back in a nice high ponytail because she's got so much thick hair and so much volume to her hair that a ponytail would look really good with her. So it took me years to figure out how to do a nice ponytail. So the first thing I do is I determine where it's going to be. And I figure right about there is good. And the idea is, is unless it is a tight ponytail, which I never enjoy drawing because I feel like they're flat. But unless it is a tight ponytail, there is absolutely no reason why you can't have a little bit of lift away from the skull either. So that being said, pull it up and away from the skull. Add some volume because Amy in particular has nice thick hair. So we're going to just pull it away. Now, you always go in the direction. Your hair typically goes back in this direction, right? That's a pretty general rule. I think most people know it. There's tutorials out there to explain it. So I always remember that when I'm drawing, that the lines should go in that direction. And I keep my hair loose because I love that loose feel. You can have it tight, and if you do, it would just be closer to the skull. That's the only difference. But again, I always try to leave a little bit of the ear poking out here, which we will once we get rid of the sketch. And then we just pull it back and just kind of keep going in that direction. Now make sure that you're following your direction and it's relatively consistent. I'm going to get rid of these arrows. Um, my directions are pretty consistent, but they're a little bit flat too. So I'm going to pull it out a little bit more. And then for the pony, I just, I don't even show the hair tie. I just show a big, nice clump of hair because, again, Amy has very, very bouncy, very lively hair. And then from there, I just kind of go into these waves, which would be very, very uh, truthful of her design. Now, shoulder here, again, hair tends to drape over whatever it comes up against. So you want to go ahead and give it some of that volume right there and a lot of volume can be achieved by shading so that may be a new tutorial for me later on but for now just drawing the hair I feel like is a good enough thing is a good enough tutorial because you'll learn a lot just from drawing the hair so we got it coming around kind of overlapping the hair the ear we got it coming here now this is her jaw this is the back of her head. Your hair does not stop at the base of your skull. It actually goes down your neck. But what people tend to do is trim it up. But that's where your hair naturally tapers. So you'll see every now and then people drawing hair down here. That's not wrong. It's actually a pretty good observation. So yes, we've got Amy here with her hair pulled back and up. And then we'll add a few more directional lines. Just kind of keeping in mind that, you know, it's all going to go in generally the same direction. And in ponytails in particular, the hair kind of tends to spiral and swirl and kind of, you know, curl around because it's just draping free. It's very fluid. It's very ribbon. So let's go ahead and toss down the opacity on that and start a new layer just to kind of clean up these lines and show you what we've got. I'm going to zoom in a bit because I tend to work close and it, um, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference really but I do tend to work close and I don't know why I'm not working close now I just kind of want you guys to be able to see it so we've got her bangs going here nice fluid motions but then right around here we're going to start going back because she's got her hair combed back into that pony. Now your hair does not have to be, it does not have to be like this. It doesn't have to be straight line completely flat. If you add nice little curves and nice little just bouncies, I call them bouncies, it is not a technical term, but it is the term I'm using. Uh, nice little bouncies like that, it gives the, the picture itself just this wonderful feeling. Just, I don't know. It gives it so much more dimension. And then again, we come around this back here. 
because she's got her hair pulled back. And then we make sure that we go over that ear. I'm very much about um, pulling over that ear because personally, I don't like your average person. I'm not even going to lie. Your average person tucks their hair behind their ear all the time. I do too, but I hate it. And I love just this nice, loose look of it draping over your ear and giving it just this wonderful, wonderful feel of dimension. And then, of course, the hair coming from down here. And there we go. And zoom out a little bit. And let's go ahead and take care of that pony. So your ponytail, we've determined, is from back here. So really, all the directional lines from the back of the ponytail should be going away from that center of that that center of tension which is where the elastic or the um, ponytail holder is holding it in so just make sure that when you're drawing it that you keep that in mind that you do have a focal point for the top or for the um, start of the ponytail and I realize I'm babbling a lot and it's it, it may be confusing but I think what you guys are going to get more from is just watching me do the actual drawing, which is why I'm trying to focus a little bit more on that. So, and I'm talking for my own benefit here, kind of explaining the method to my madness. Sometimes it's a learning process when you're teaching other people, is you're learning why, why you necessarily make those artistic decisions that you make. So here we have Amy with her nice ponytail kind of draping forward. And again, this can be cleaned up even more. I'm just not going to take the time to do it because, like I said, everyone's going to have their own way of inking. Everyone's going to have their own way of doing it. Personally, I, I tend to do an outline, and then I fill in with my color. But that's just me. That doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be anybody. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And this is kind of what we're left with. This is nice. I feel like I can't have Amy over there just her head. I need to have her with some hair on. <laughs> but yes, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guidelines in here so you can see. Again, leaving that eyebrow in there. I leave it in there as an artistic choice. Typically, you would not see a person's eyebrow through their hair. So there's Amy with an updo. And yes. Oh, there's some guidelines in here. And let's go in here. All right, all right. Being too finicky, I just wanted this to be quick and simple and to the point, and I'm dragging it out. All right, so let's do this blunt cut. Now, Amy does not have a blunt cut. Amy has sweep, sweep to the side bangs. She has layered hair, and it just, you know, a blunt cut is not her. I'm doing this for the benefit of showing people blunt bangs because I think that a lot of people fail to realize a few key aspects of blunt bangs and I really just I want to I want to teach you guys something and if you don't get anything out of this I hope this is what you get out of it just this idea this concept here so you guys know what I mean by blunt bangs and if you don't I'll explain so we have Amy her part well, for this, we're going to change her part to the middle because typically people who have blunt bangs have a part directly in the middle of their head because what they kind of do is this, this trifold thing here. Because there's a, there's a part here, there's a part here, and then your hair goes back like that. That's very sloppy. Don't worry too much about it. Um, the hairline is not as important here, but for the sake of argument, we are going to draw it in, and I will show you why. So if... Amy had a blunt cut. That means that she's got blunt bangs, which means that she's got Spock bangs. That's how I like to, kind of like to explain it, is that they come straight across like this. Now, you will see bangs drawn like this, and that's fine. A lot of people stylistically choose it. I believe um, in Pantian stocking, um, I think stocking has a very blunt cut straight across, whereas Panty has kind of the... Um, sweep aside sort of oh what is that called oh I forget what the cut is called I'm not big on hair I don't even take care of my own correctly so I don't really know the terminology but this is what I mean by a blunt cut but when drawing a blunt cut in particular I don't like to do that 
what I like to do is pick my focal point, which is right here. This is where the part is, and this is where the part is, and this is where another part is, although you don't really see it. There's a few things you have to determine. How low the bangs go, how thick the bangs are, because it varies, and I'm, I'm not going to get into the different things, of very, or different versions of varied thick bangs. I'm going to just do kind of one general one, and then you could take it and leave it as you wish. And, um whether or not the hair is going to kind of match it. So uh, you'll see as I draw what I mean. So let's get going with these bangs. We're going to just go ahead and draw them out. Now, what people fail to realize is your forehead sticks out. Now, it doesn't stick out like this. <laughs> like that, okay? It's not like a jagged point. It is a nice curve. And what does hair do? And I've, I've said this a few times now. What hair does is it follows, it drapes, it goes across the plane on which it rests. So if you've got a blunt cut, your, cut, your blunt cut bangs are going to follow the curve of your forehead. That's just fact. It's gravity. It's everything. So, you know, let's just say that her bangs sort of end here. It's kind of a bad height for her, but you know, a blunt cut doesn't necessarily really look good on me either. But what it is, is this is your focal point. You're going in this direction away from your cut, from your part. So that's how your hair should go. And the hair, as it travels, it starts to kind of curve, it starts to kind of get messier, it kind of gets softer and kind of lays across things. So, you know, in soft curves, now you can have a nice blunt cut if you want. I sometimes like to incorporate straight lines into it, but overall I just like the look of a nice soft cut like this. And we can add more body. Now, Amy, again, has very full hair, so she's going to have some nice, bouncy bangs. And nothing says that they can't vary in length. It, nothing says that they can't come down as they go around. Typically, what hairstylists will do is they will cut in a circle motion across. They typically don't go straight across and follow the curvature of your, of your uh, natural face shape. Amy just has a very bad face shape for this, but I'm doing it to her anyway because she can't stop me. So this is basically it. Now let's uh let's get let's back up a little bit. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because I want to show you guys something. Hair is again messy and it tends to clump. So when you're doing your hairlines, it's actually better to start at the bottom where the area of concentration is the greatest. So up here, the area of concentration is the greatest because that's where the hair is coming from. Down here is a good area of concentration because that's where the hair is meeting up. So if you work in that fashion and with that in mind, where your areas of concentration are going to be, then you can do things like, okay, we want like just a little break in her bangs right here because it's cute. That's cool. We can do that. Just take that area of concentration and pull your hair away from it. Let's have another break. Why not? There we go. And keep in mind that the hair is going to kind of adjust a bit as it goes. And you can kind of just give it like a better, fuller look. Now, here it gets messy. This is where I tend to struggle. Your hair does come down. Now it'll go around like this, but it kind of gets mixed in with the hair that's getting pulled back at the same time. So you have to be aware of that as you're drying, that there is going to be hair here still. Typically, hairstylists pull as much forward as possible, but they don't always get it all. So you may have a few flyaways, and that stylistically is fine, having a few flyaways here and there. I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's your hair, really. I'm just showing you the physics. Then again, if you're drawing cartoons, physics don't tend to matter. Wile E. Coyote is a good example. But then there's this. So say the hair is getting pulled back in this direction. 
Or what a lot of people tend to like to do is just kind of have like this little tendril here that just kind of chills out. This is very uh, anime-esque. A lot of people do it. And then like they could just have the hair pulled back like I showed you up above. Or better yet, which I see a lot of people doing these days, it is becoming a very popular haircut again, is you pull the part back and then have this forward. I'm using that a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And then again, away from the skull itself. And then they just have straight hair. This is actually a look that's coming back in style, which is weird because this is the look I grew up with. My mom always had me cutting flat, straight bangs, which is probably why I don't like them as much anymore. And um, yeah. So. That being said, we can actually take away some of these bangs here on the side, pull this forward, pull this backwards. Now really, that's a little bit extreme. I mean, yes, it's coming off her head. Sometimes we just get a little carried away with our body. So let's go ahead and fix that up a little bit, Miss Amy. Um, and then this goes back, and then this goes forward, and then this goes like this. And then we can actually have a nice sort of uh, old-style Egyptian, not necessarily Egyptian, but you know what I mean, uh, look to her. Let me give her this nice Cleopatra look with um, her hair going straight down, make it very straight. Again, this is a hairstyle that was very popular in the 90s, and I see coming back, so... Now, nothing says that it has to be straight either. Um, I'm struggling here with this. There you go. That's kind of the idea here. Um, nothing says it can't be a little wavy. Nothing says that at all. I see a lot of waves these days too. So you have a lot of versatility with hair. Even if you have something like an, a very strong blunt cut, on a character. So you have this nice blunt cut here right around the face but maybe that's just to bring out her face. The rest of her is curvy and wild and crazy very much like Amy herself. So let's go ahead and toss that on in opacity and just clean it up. Because um, I feel like if I clean it up you guys will get an even better idea of what I'm talking about. So when I'm cleaning it up I'm going to use less lines but they're going to be stronger lines. I don't like that one anymore. So here we go. And even if you want to get a little bit of a blunt feel, you can. You can draw that line straight across. I just recommend that if you're going to do straight across lines like that, that you add a lot more sketchy sort of pull away lines just to kind of give it that feel that um, there's depth there because your your bangs are going to curve in this direction around your forehead. That's just a fact of life. Um, nobody has a flat forehead. I mean, I, I suppose, you know, maybe some people have more of a flat forehead or a flat appearance than others, but your typical person has, you know, a forehead, <laughs> I guess. So you work as best you can around the character itself. You have to really understand the anatomy of your particular character or the character that you're drawing. I mean, fan art counts um, if you're learning from it. So there you go. And pull those down. Nice, nice loose waves. Again, I like to have a little bit of the ear showing through. Why not? It just shows that there's an ear underneath there. It comes around. It comes over her shoulder. Do the same thing over here. See, and we're changing up the drawing altogether, even as we're going. Now, you can have a really good, strong idea. There's nothing wrong with that. My recommendation, though, is when you're practicing, just let the hair do what it wants to do sometimes. You would be amazed at what just giving your hand a little freedom can result in. I realize that my lines are very sloppy. Again... I don't do very many, very many how-to videos because what I would rather you guys do is come to my live streams 
and watch me actually sketch and work because explaining it as I go along is not the same as uh, you guys seeing the actual process itself. See, now look at there. Isn't that gorgeous? It cleaned up so well. And again, those sketches led to it being this clean. So let me go ahead and get rid of these underlying guidelines so you guys can kind of get a really good idea. I would actually get rid of that because I would just show the hair. And then some of this does get corrected in color or it gets emphasized with color um, and things like that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And again, I'm not going to go over coloring. I'm very sorry. I just I don't have the time to do it today. Maybe someday I'll just save this file and then maybe someday we can... Um, over some coloring together. Now, oh, I guess I don't need that either. You guys can quite clearly see what direction it's going in. Now, if you take a look at this, Amy is looking pretty good for having a blunt cut that's not actually her style. But the good thing about cartoons is we can make our characters do whatever we want them to. Now, this has turned out a lot better than it looked like it was going to. So again, I encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up just because you can't get the lines exactly the way you want to. Let them be. Maybe they're meant to be like that. Just give it some time. Give it some uh, dedication. Try again. Not, you know, that's the great thing about uh, all these digital programs that we have is, or even paper and pencil. You can always get more paper and pencil. Always. Um, and with this, I don't like it. I'll just make a new layer and try again and try again. And I can keep trying again Oops, until I'm satisfied. And if I'm never satisfied, okay, let's move on to something else completely. We can always come back to it. There's no need to get frustrated. But there we go. We have Amy with a blunt cut. And I think she looks pretty darn good for it not being her style or <laughs> anything. So the last thing I want to show you guys is a short haircut. Now, if you guys all watch Dragon Ball Z like I did growing up, there's one thing you always notice about Bulma Briefs is that she never had the same hairstyle twice. So she was a representation of fashion. She was a representation of uh, wealth and trendiness. If you compare her to, say, someone like Chi Chi, who typically who had the exact same haircut as a child as she did as an adult, then you'll see that there's very little variation in that character versus Bulma. And I think that that's why I started kind of recognizing that while I was drawing all these hairstyles, I was like, but they never stay the same with Bulma. And it kind of encouraged me to look at other hairstyles, even for the same character, just so you don't get bored with your character. You can always change your character up. And hair is one of the easiest ways to do it. Hair and clothes. If you don't mind, I'm going to take a quick drink of water here. I've been talking for over half an hour. Hmm. But alright, let's go ahead and get into this um, short hairstyle and then our, my tutorial will basically be done. Um, let's add another layer. Now, let's see, let's, let's change it up. Um, let's give her sort of a 7 of 9 hairstyle. So if you guys don't know who 7 of 9 is, she is a character from Star Trek Voyager and my husband has been watching Star Trek Voyager endlessly for like the past month now so seven of nine is a very dynamic character and i hate you know I, I i don't hate to say it at all the woman who plays her is incredibly attractive and she seems to be able to pull off anything she does because she's been in a, a lot of movies but let's go ahead and let's use little amy and give her a seven of nine sort of haircut now seven of nine has a very it's it's a very basic shape if you think about it okay so here's the head it goes like this. This is very rough, so don't judge. It kind of goes very, very roughly like this. It goes back and it kind of curls out and it has she has a little ear there. But it's a very soft, a very soft sort of um, slick back. It's not heavily, uh, actually she has a, that's right, she has like a little French twist back there too. But we're just gonna say it's short hair. It's not actually short hair. I'm sorry guys, I was wrong. It's not actually short hair. She has it pulled back into a soft um, look sort of thing. I, I can't explain it. And then it's pulled into a twist. Because I remember the episode last night. 
she fell down and her hair came out. And I was like, oh, she does actually have very long hair. She just pulls it back in a very graceful manner. So it doesn't matter because it's a short hair. Day. So anyway, so let's go ahead and take Amy and use her. Sorry, Amy, we're going to use you. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one up there because it's kind of draping over and I don't want it to be in there. So you start here with your point of focus, which is going to be the hair going back in the direction it's being swept in. Now, unfortunately for Amy, I did kind of give her a big forehead. And just to be kind, I'm going to get rid of some of it for her. And you can draw out that hairline because you can always just go through after you get all your sketch lines in and erase it. It's not a big deal. That is, again, the beauty of these digital programs. But again, you want to pull that hair up and away from the skull. You don't want it sitting flat. Pull it away, pull it away. Now, I always add a little curly cue here. That's something I picked up from Dragon Ball Z. But, yes, basically, we're just going to follow the direction that the hair is going in. And we're going to taper this down because it does just go straight back. Keeping in mind that you have a forehead here to be very aware of. I'm just outlining that forehead. Um, what I do is I do my sketch lines and then I go through and I erase the harsh lines and then I kind of toy with it from there. It's a very easy to work back and forth process. So I, I don't think mind. But our main section here is what's in front. So let's just keep that in mind. And I'm giving her a lot of body because, again, Amy overall just has a lot of body to her hair. Now, this might be a little bit too extreme. So, again, we'll just take it down and follow it back. I think that's, uh, that's perfect right there. See, and again, you won't always get it on the first time, but that doesn't mean you should give up. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. So we're going to, now I know some people who like to actually draw the entire hairline like that on the outside, and that's cool. Some people make it look very good, and it's actually easier for coloring, but I kind of go for a more natural look, as natural as you could be in two dimensions. But, um, so I will draw in, like, just little squiggles and stuff like that, just to kind of remind myself that, you know, that's not the actual hairline. But here we go, we kind of have this going here now. Again, Amy's hair is very flowy and I like to give a lot of body, so we're going to just go ahead and toss quite a few strands there and then go along that harsh line and sort of get rid of some of it. And yes, 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 this is looking fantastic. And again, a lot of this, um, I sketch very lightly, very loosely. And I try not to get too incredibly detailed because I know that with my coloring, I can bring it out. And, you know, I know I keep seeing it. I'm saying it and teasing you guys with that fact. But um, you, it, it, drawing and art all together is a process of different, excuse me, different stages. And um, minor is just a stage. Coloring is another stage. Sketching is a stage. Inking is a stage. All of these stages combine to make um, one finalized drawing. And if you think of it like that, it almost feels more like a journey. And, uh, you know, that sounds so corny. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, my God, these people are just, they're, they're going to kick your face in. You're right. It sounds corny, but that's the way I've had to start thinking about it because I was getting so discouraged. Everything looked flat. Everything looked stiff. Everything looked boring. And the second I started think of it, thinking of it as layering, uh, layering of ability, then all of a sudden, like, I started having fun with it, you know? And that's what art should be. Art should be fun. Um, drawing should be fun. And, you know, I understand that for some people it's a job, for some people it's work. But you got to stop and think, you know... Did I start drawing because I knew it was going to be my job someday? Or did I start drawing because I wanted to create a world and start layering my ideas and start building my own friends and things like that? 
again, it all sounds really creepy. I know um, from a non-artist perspective, which I've seen and heard, uh, you know, my classmates and my friends tend to be very blunt. And when I explain these concepts to them, they kind of, you know, they step away and they're like, okay. But I, you know, that's, that's the thing. My hair does not do anything awesome. It sits on my head and it grows. And that's about it. I cannot curl it because the curls fall out. I cannot hairspray it because it, it, it's just so heavy that everything drops. You know, I, I can't do a whole lot with my hair. So since I can't do a whole lot with my hair, why not make a character whose hair changes in every episode or every, every story? Why not make a character who, you know, can just wear the hair that I would like to wear? So, I mean, there's, there's a psychology behind it. And it's not a bad psychology. I, I don't think it's ever wrong for people to use their imaginations. And I don't think it's wrong for us to ever explore it. And, you know, it gets frustrating when you want to convey an idea. I want my character to have short hair, but I can't make her short hair look wrong. So I'm going to get on YouTube and I'm going to look up videos on how to draw short hair. And that is totally cool. It's part of the learning process. It's part of observation, which, you know, observation and assessment. And that those are things that they teach me in nursing school, guys. I mean, you learn more through that than you'll realize. Watching somebody else draw... You will learn so much without them saying a word because you're seeing what they're doing and in your mind, you're, you're building synapses, you're building these, these um, neural lines and whatever you want to call them. I'm getting all scientific on you on how to do the exact, the exact thing that you're seeing and how you would do it. So here's a nice, cool, slicked back look for Amy. Let's go ahead and get rid of the sketches and let's go ahead and get rid of that under guide. It's pretty good. Now, in this instance, I don't have anything going over her ear because the way I did her hair, I decided to go ahead and have it tucked back. Now, looking at this and the way it is, and because of, um, let's go ahead and, if you see her skull shape here, we are still going a little bit too high with that. Again, nothing says we can't just come in and do one of these really quick, really simple, and then just erase. Look at that. We can fix almost anything by just stepping back, taking a second look at it, deciding what we want to do, how far we want to go with it, and then just making those small adjustments. Nothing says you cannot make small adjustments. Amy's hair in particular is very wild, and she is a constant adjustment. Her hair in all of my pictures is never the same way twice, ever. She is a constant work in motion. So, taking a look at that and seeing how we've done this, let's go ahead and get rid of that guideline again. It looks a little bit better. So, as you can see, let's go ahead and turn on the other layer. That's not it. Just, it doesn't even, like, the the character itself remains the same. Her face stays the same in every single picture. But you get a different feel from her in every single picture. Here, I kind of, this is Amy in her everyday life. This is Amy not wanting to do anything and not wanting to clean her hair, so she's going to pull it back, but she's still going to look good doing it. Here's Amy sort of, I don't know, maybe a little bit older, maybe a little bit more mature, maybe trying to set a better example. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And kind of cleaning up her appearance so that way you could see her face, but at the same time maintaining that nice wild uh, characteristic of her hair with the waviness. Let's find that because I want to do something real quick. Look at this. It's all flat back here. So let's just go in and add some length. We can do that. There's always a chance to go back and fix it. It's never set in stone. Hair in particular should be free. Hair in particular should be fun. I I believe anyway. So there we go. See, still a little sketchy, but we could that can always be clear cleaned up. And then here is like Amy living out her inner seven of nine or Ripley or whoever whatever badass female character you want to emulate, you know. Her hair could be long for that matter, I suppose, so it doesn't really matter. 
But these are just, you know, a couple examples and me showing you guys how the drawing process goes for me, my sketching, my hair. And hair, like I said, is one of the most loose things that I do. So it's the one that I wanted to show you guys. Obviously, I could show you how to draw hands. I could show you how to draw eyes and all of that good fun stuff. But hair, to me, is just the most fun. So, yeah, we're going on an hour here with the video. I'm not sure how it's going to upload, but I guess we'll find out. Um, I do apologize for a lot of the rambling. I know that I did quite a bit. But I feel like um, it's kind of like I'm showing you guys a mini live stream. And I enjoy that. That's, that's the kind of stuff I want to show you guys. Mostly because, like I said before, you learn, you absorb by watching. Um, your People are keenly, keenly observant. They don't realize it. A lot of people don't realize it. It's just like, like when little kids pick up these habits that they see their parents do. And their parents are like, I don't even know how they knew how to do that. Well, they've learned it from you. All they have to do is watch. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. Um, if it did, let me know below. If you guys want to see more things like this, then by all means, go ahead and uh, leave a comment below and let me know. And I'll see what I can do. But, um... Yeah, this is a very long video. I'm not sure how it's going to upload, but, you know, it is what it is. And, again, I just hope I helped somebody or made somebody feel a little bit better about their ability to draw hair or provided some tips for people to start drawing hair with a little bit more bounce and a little bit more flavor. I say flavor, but I don't mean flavor like strawberry or cherry. I mean flavor as in, like, fvvvvv. So if you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, leave a comment below, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.